all it's and it's all small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff, Steve Elliott. <laughs> Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. I must say off the top, Kira and I did not plan for this kind of <laughs> symbolic samosas to happen between us because we both are going to talk around relatively the same kinds of topics. Now, I recently was cleaning out my basement, reorganizing my bookshelves, and I came across a book that many years ago had really resonated with me, and that was called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and It's All Small Stuff by Richard Carlson. And when I started kind of glancing through the pages, I realized I'm in a very different place from a life perspective when I read that book many years ago. And so I've kind of refreshed my memory and gone through the book again. I think we're all guilty of getting bogged into the small stuff, which is kind of what Kira's first part of the presentation talked about. Checking those emails, getting those phone calls, putting out this fire at work, putting out that fire. When in reality, when you really stop to think about it, a lot of that stuff is very minor, minor and should not be taking up a lot of our energy and time. Now this book has a hundred strategies. I'm not going to bore you with all of them. I'm going to talk about three that have resonated with me, and I think they will benefit you as well. <coughs> this is high tech presentation. <laughs> <laughs> the first strategy, count to 10. Again, Kira referenced a breathing break. How many times have we found ourselves, pulse is racing, Fists are starting to clench. We're getting that anger burning in our stomach, churning away. And we want to just lash out at whatever's causing our frustration. That's reactive, and that is very damaging to the relationship that you're trying to have with that other person on the other side of the lash out. And so this simple principle says count to 10, which is, I take a deep breath in, I count one in my head, I let it out. Two. And by the time I get to 10, I've done a couple of things if I've done that. I've given my brain more oxygen, which is gonna allow me to think a little bit clearer and not get into that reactive space mode. And I've also given myself a pause. And a pause is very important because it kind of dials down the anger and the feelings that you're having when you first have that encounter. I mentioned being a different station in life. I'm now the father of two boys. And for those that have kids, you know that they know how to push your buttons. <laughs> and so I found myself embracing count to 10 because it, it can help with the parenting relationship so that you're not damaging and not lashing out at your child, but you're coming from a place of love. The next strategy that resonates with me is lighten up. And I've been guilty of this in this very room where evaluators have stood up and said, Steve, why are you so serious? You're just delivering a speech, lighten up. This has implications in my career. I recently came on board as a Starbucks store manager, and I was finding myself being way too serious during the training. Now that doesn't mean you need to be flippant and off the cuff, but what was happening to me was I was feeling serious and getting frustrated, and as a result, I was shutting down and not being receptive to the feedback and training that I was being given. And that's the key with lightening up. You need to find and recognize, okay, I'm being way too serious now. What's triggering this seriousness within me? In my case, it's I expect perfection from myself. And when I don't get perfection, I get serious and I start shutting down. And that's what was happening at Starbucks. I was seeing these baristas make these beautiful conco coffee concoctions and latte art. And I was struggling to make a basic coffee. And so I became very frustrated because I'm like, why can't I be like them? 
but it was an unfair comparison. This person had been working at Starbucks for years. Of course they're going to be better than me. So you need to dial it down and just have fun. When I started to do that, I realized that I got better as a barista because I was being open to feedback and I wasn't taking myself as seriously. The last point really came home to me when I started to work at Target. Because at Target, every meeting, every conference call, we started with recognition. No matter what the meeting theme was, we recognized someone that had made a difference in our day. And this strategy, Recognize, talks about that. Recognize at least one person a day for the great job that they do. It may be the coworker that's always bailing you out with last minute deadline help. It may be somebody at home that's done a chore for you that was totally unexpected. If you recognize that person, you will find that not only does that person repeat the behavior, but you yourself feel great because you've made someone else's day. So take the extra time and do that recognition. I challenge you to look at these three strategies, maybe pick out one that you resonates with you, and make it your own for making a change in your life and not getting caught up in all that small stuff that can sometimes bog us down in life. I know it certainly has worked for me on a number of levels, both professionally and personally, and I think if you find yourself doing one of them, you're going to find benefit as well. Madame Toastmaster.